Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do my May plan with me. I worked really hard to get this one out for you guys. Not just on time, but early for once. So uh, let's go ahead and dive into it. This month's theme is all about photography as May is National Photography Month. I've done a similar theme like this years ago, but I've never shown it on my channel before. Once again, I decided to challenge myself and I committed to doing more drawing beyond the cover page. However, best laid plans and all. <laughs> and you'll see exactly what I mean later. I got the inspiration for this cover page from someone named Pixie on Amino Apps. I'll leave the link to their profile down below so that you can go check out their bullet journal themes. They've got some really cute themes, but unfortunately they've not updated since the end of 2020. So I'm not really sure what's going on with their um, art right now. Of course, I messed up the sketch when I was trying to ink it in with my Pigma Micron plastic nib. Oh well, I'm still learning, so please be patient with me. <laughs> At first I tried to freehand the circles, then I went back to my circle stencil that I had used to draw in the circles on the initial sketch because I'm not very good at freehanding uh, circles at all by myself. I also have a circle helix. Uh, I don't know if I, I've used it before on other themes and I think you, I don't know if you remember me using it before. Um, but I, I can't remember if I, if I broke that one out for this theme or not. I was mainly interested in getting this stencil because it has so many different uh, size circles that are more varied than my little helix thing is. And also I really enjoyed using my Crayola Super Tips on this theme as I rarely ever break them out. I feel like that they've just been sitting there collecting dust lately. So I wanted to make an effort this month and probably for next month as well to do a theme that would incorporate them as much as possible. I don't know if you could notice also, I um, I numbered them a few months ago. I went through and lined everyone up by color and every single Crayola Super Tips. And I have like over a hundred of them and got these like little circle, number circle things I got off of Amazon and just went through, I uh, swatched them all. And then I went individually and numbered each and every one. And that took hours to do actually, because I had to figure out like what color goat went where, da da da, you know, you know how it goes. And of course I mess up on the little Polaroid rainbow colors thing here, but I do go back later and I correct it. The quote I chose is one by the famed African-American photographer, Gordon Parks. I left links to information about him in the description box. Um, I kept the quote page rather simple with a couple pieces of washi tape. I initially wanted to be super creative, but I didn't want the quote page itself to compete with how involved and pretty the cover page is. I just kind of want to keep them like, you know, one would be very like creative and very out there and would stand out. And then the quote page, I wanted to just mainly be a compliment to it. Once again, I went with my new calendar layout for my monthly log. This time, however, I made the boxes a little bigger than they were in my April plan with me because I needed a little bit more room. I was so proud of the uh, sketch I did above of an old Kodak film canister. I initially sketched it out using graphite paper because I didn't feel confident in my abilities to draw it freehand, um, but I think it still turned out beautifully. And over here I have a task and goals box and I also kind of sort of changed them up from what I had done in the April plan with me. For the drawing I used a mixture of the Crayola Super Tips, 
as well as my gray zebra mild liner and my Pigma Micron uh, plastic nib in order to color it in. I, I couldn't believe that on the first try that I got the color, the yellow Kodak color perfectly. I was like, yes, I can't believe this. I'm, I'm getting a little bit better when it comes to color theory. I, I'm not gonna toot my own horn just yet, but I feel like I'm improving. I don't know, maybe I, maybe I am, maybe I'm not. <laughs> Someone correct me on that one. As I was filling in the calendar, I realized I had made a huge mistake, uh, but it took me a minute to figure out what the heck I did wrong. And once it dawned on me, I felt so silly that I missed it. Now let's see if you can catch it. Let me just say though, correction tape comes in clutch during mistakes like this. You see me struggling, like, wait a minute, something's not lining up right. Look, 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 look. <laughs> and I did go back, yes, and I corrected him. Because <laughs> I felt so silly when I realized what I'd done wrong. Anyways, though, I have come to really like this layout. Aside from being more aesthetically pleasing than the monthly log I've been doing for years, I find this calendar log very functional um, there are some months where I barely have anything of note on my monthly log so I don't always need a ton of space for the monthly calendar itself and to round out the decorations here I have some more stamps that I bought from Amazon these are camera related stamps obviously and finally I have a quote from Confucius that states that everything has beauty, but not everyone sees it. And I feel like that's very appropriate when it comes to photography and looking through the lens of a camera and seeing things that are just gorgeous and perfect and seeing it as art. It's one of the things I love most about, you know, photography and taking pictures and everything. Now, this is where I royally screwed up. I initially tried to draw individual Polaroids for my mood tracker, but then I got impatient and frustrated with how they looked. And I looked at my new stamps and then I saw, well, there's a stamp in here that's the same size as the Polaroid boxes I was going to draw. So I decided to use the stamp for the tracker. Big mistake because that so did not work out. There was hardly any room to write the title of the spread or even the key for the tracker. And in the end, I just got annoyed and bought a Polaroid themed mood tracker off of Etsy. <laughs> I'll leave the link for that Etsy store below. And funny enough, it took me another hour to get even that to work because all attempts to resize it to fit my A5 Archer and Olive journal would not work. This one page took me longer than my entire monthly theme put together. Just never again. I need to find a better mood tracker design from now on when I, because I cannot do this again. This was so frustrating. My habit tracker is the same layout as last month, so no real change here. I will warn you that this layout takes forever. If you have a ton of habits to keep track of, it's gonna it's gonna take you a while to get all these boxes down. Um, so just be, be prepared to spend a lot of time sketching out tiny little calendars. Um, I think I'm gonna have to probably come up with a better system than this because even though I love doing my monthly spreads and it's kind of almost like cathartic and calming in some ways, except for that damn mood tracker. <laughs> I, doing something this tedious and over and over and over again with these little boxes and these little calendars, it it's a bit much. So I think that in the future I might 
um, do something in, in terms of like a calendar, look, a mini miniature calendar, maybe in Procreate, and then just print those out and paste them into my journal just to make things a little easier. Especially considering the fact that with my habit trackers, I don't do anything special drawing wise with them. And also maybe I should just lessen the amount of habits that I'm trying to track. Because some of these habits, like I don't even do them every day. Hell, I don't even do them once a week sometimes. So, I don't know. Give me some advice, guys. I'm trying to figure out like what I'm going to do in the future with my habit tracker. Or maybe have it as like a weekly thing. I don't know. Like in for each weekly spread. I'm going to have to look at some more ideas, maybe online or something. Because... This ain't it. <laughs> See what I this how long this takes me. Like this is sped up at like six hundred percent. The video is. So can you imagine how long this took me at normal speed? In keeping with the photography theme, I plan to start using my other DSLR camera to start taking my own candid photos throughout the month. I miss shooting stills because I focus so much on video and I've been working pretty much exclusively on my Canon M50. So it's time for my other Canon camera to get a little love. This next page will be a collection of date night ideas for my husband and I. We've come to realize that we've worked so much that we don't really get a lot of time to spend together. And now that COVID numbers have gone down a little bit in our area, we feel comfortable going out to restaurants again. And anyone who has been to Richmond will know that we have a ton of excellent restaurants to visit. And last but not least, I have the first day's spread for the month. Um, I'm using a couple of pictures I have here from either Amazon or AliExpress. I really can't remember um, where I got those from from. And that's my May spread. My plan for the month is to upload videos showing off the photos I've taken that I will use in my weekly spreads. So you'll get more of that. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video though. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell icon so that you know when I upload. If anyone watching this does photography as a hobby, what do you shoot on? Anyways, thank you so much for your support and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.